Hi, I'm Oriana Leo with Click On This here in Los Angeles for a very special screening of Banshee Season 3, Episode 2, attended by the show's stars. I'll be sitting down and picking their brain about everything Banshee. Anthony, you are already a big star in New Zealand and in Australia, but playing Sheriff Hood was your American debut. How has your experience been different as uh, from there to here in the United States? Um... It's uh, yeah. Look, it's it's been a big mix. It's, uh, uh, being away from home a lot is um, is uh, I could probably do without that. Mm -hmm. That said, you know, it's been a treat coming over and working with some really great people over here on a on a show that's um, that's doing really well. So um, it, it, it's it's overall been fantastic. And there's not really any difference. You feel like it's the same whether you're no, here or there. I feel like it's you know it's the, it's the same. I mean, the production values maybe a little. Uh, a little higher. I think the, the scale is a bit higher. There's a lot more money wasted on more people walking around doing seemingly nothing. But, um, you know, we still have people that do nothing in New Zealand and get paid for it on a film set. So it, it's a, a lot of it's very, very similar. It's, uh, I, I would say the scale is different, but ultimately it comes down to um, a couple of people talking to each other and a director telling them what to do and a camera pointing on it. So it, it's, it's quite similar. Can you tell us about your audition process for this role? What attracted you to it, and how did you land it? Um, well, I was in Australia working on another uh, TV show at the time this came up, and I think that pilot season, it was probably the first script that came through that I didn't think was... Um, I, let's just say I thought it was good. <laughs> uh, I, it, there was, it was slim pickings that year, um, from my point of view, and I, I, I leapt at it. I saw Alan Ball's name on it, and um, Jonathan Dropper, and, and, and I just thought, yeah, of course, there's no way I'm going to get this, but I'll put a tape down anyway, because we tape and send it via the interweb. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so I put it down, didn't think anything of it, forgot about it, and then heard back that they really liked me, and they flew me over, screen tested, uh, managed to pull it off, and um, they cast me. So it was very simple. It was actually, it was, uh, you know, compared to the horror stories I've heard with some people going back, you know, eight, nine times, and the, the, the hoops that people have to jump through, you know, I had... I had one hoop and it was um, it was only about that high off the ground, so it was really easy. It was Sounds like a, like a dream job. More like a forward <laughs> roll. Yeah. Well, that was easy. Um, it was easy. It was surprisingly easy. I'm still waiting for something to happen. No, it won't. One of the fan questions that I've received to ask pretty much all of you is that you know there's blood and boobies is kind of the genre. That's boobies. what I call it. Yeah. Um, but you do a lot of fight scenes as well as love scenes. What do you find to be more more challenging and why? Um, well, they're both challenging in, in different ways. You know, I, I, um, I mean, the, 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 the naked scenes, the sex scenes, anything like that, you know, I mean, that's really uncomfortable, but that's really just an exercise in covering up modesty garments mm -hmm. um, and protecting women's um, integrity. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just a way of like, trying to n not feel how nervous I am about the whole process by focusing on other people's needs, you know. Sure. It's quite selfish, really, but hey. Um, ostensibly it looks like I'm doing something good, but I'm not. Um, so, you know, that's very uncomfortable in that respect. And then um, the flip side of that is, uh, you know, I, I get to roll around with 250-pound men whose arms each weigh 80 pounds. You know, it's, it, it, you come out of that sound battered and bruised. So um, that definitely is challenging in that respect. Mm -hmm. um, and learning the fight choreography is... Um, I mean, I did martial arts for about eight years, so I, it comes relatively easily. Plus, I'm doing a lot of it, so yeah. it's. Uh, but it, but it's always a challenge, you know. They're always trying to come up with new things that are going to make things, you know, new exciting ways to beat me up. So, um, you know, that's that's challenging, and that that becomes a physical challenge. Mm -hmm. for me. I did meet Gino Seegers, who plays Chait in Littlestone, oh, and God. he is quite an intimidating man. So. Uh, yeah, you did have a fight scene with him last season, I believe, mm. at the, uh, on the reservation. Yeah. Did you get hurt? I haven't had a fight scene yet that I didn't get hurt <laughs> in, in some way. Okay. In fact, Gino got hurt in, in that scene. He's, uh, I mean, he's a bit of a Goliath, and he went to raise his fist to punch me on the top of I can't remember it, but, <laughs> you know, pop me on the top of the head. <laughs> and he hit his hand on the ceiling um, and cut his, cut his knuckle up. So... And he had to go and get stitches to, to fix that up. But, I mean, he's such a gentle giant, so he's always trying to take care of... And in, 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 in our fight scenes, you know, it's me, so he's always trying to take care of me and make sure his big, meaty arms don't actually do any damage. But, you know, those big guys are so clumsy. 
Do you know what I mean? They don't know what they're doing with their limbs. It's like having trees that are attached to it. You hear that, big guys? To also big guys. <laughs> Eesh. We well, uh, have had your fair share of giants, uh, nemeses on this. No, they're all show. giants. Yes. they're all huge. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Like it's never. Every time I was like, oh, yeah, they cast the biggest guy mm -hmm. they possibly could. But um, they're all. Uh, the funny thing is, they're all lovely guys as well. So it's, it, it, it works out. It, it's as fluid as it can be. Yeah. But inevitably, you know, you roll around with big guys, you get bashed up. Yeah. Uh, through the seasons, you have had flash. There's been many flashbacks in which you play mm -hmm. your younger self. Yes. How have you approached that? Have you filled in the gaps for yourself as far as what his backstory is, kind of between what we've seen? Um, it was some of that. Some of that was given prior to s starting shooting, and and some of it they made up on the fly. So, uh, particularly the military career came up at the end of season two. Um, the the very end. The very end. Yes. So uh, you know, I mean, twenty twenty hindsight, of, you know, that we we could have adjusted things earlier on. Um, had that come up earlier but you know that, that that's one of the great things about the show and the way that it's made is it's, it's pretty organic and it's it's pretty um fluid and i think it's a positive reflection on on the ideas tank you know they're always thinking laterally about how they can um add layers to the characters mm. and how we can how we can show new new cool stuff to the show and and go deeper with character and story so um you know whilst there is inevitably if, if you're trying to expand in that way there is there's going to be a couple of drawbacks, but I think ultimately it's really positive for the show. Good. Mm. Um, I have to know, do you have a real name for Lucas Hood in your mind, or has it been revealed to you? Gary. <laughs> Is that your the name that you take on? Sure. Or does uh, it matter? No, I, 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 I love the idea of it never, ever uh, being known. I think that's probably, I, I don't think it will ever get exposed. I hope it doesn't, because I remember on Sex in the City, not that I watch it, um, that when Mr. Big was John, Big Poo. Boring. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> like okay, now he's just John. Now yeah. it's not, you know, the, it, you, you, lose, you lose some mystique. And I think um, having that little mystery, I mean, it's, you know, it's no huge mystery, but it, it's also indicative of who this guy has been in his past. If you grew up, I mean, not many people grew up without a name. Uh, that they attach themselves to or that, that, that at some level you scratch back and you find out this person's name. Um, that's part of the enigma that is the character we now know as Lucas Hurt. Yeah. Um, do you miss Rabbit? Because I already do. Nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> you as a person, do you miss having yeah, him miss and his, his storyline? Yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, I miss the actor that, that yeah. played the character. He's, yeah. you know, he's fantastic, but... Um, you know, I think every all the storylines have their a natural shelf life, and I think if we went any further with that, it would start getting a bit yawny. Mm -hmm. I think we were in a, went out at the right time where it felt satisfying. It just felt like we've eaten the right amount of food on our plate. We didn't overfill, and then you just kind of want to go to sleep, or you didn't. You weren't starving for more. You know, I think we got the the amount right, and um, I think he went out uh, literally and metaphorically with a bang. So. Um, you know, I was pretty happy with how that how that all panned out. One final question for you. Is mm -hmm. there anything that you would like to see Lucas Hood do that hasn't been written in yet? Yeah, I think Lucia, Lucas should go to New Zealand, learn <laughs> to surf, and go on a road trip. I would watch that. then I could work at home. But, uh, <laughs> no, look, I, 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 I got to be honest. I, I tend to stay away from the, the storytelling ideas. I know a lot of actors stroll into writing rooms and tell the writers where they went wrong and what they should be doing but um i i kind of look at it like you know those those i'm paid to turn up and do the acting and and they're paid to do the writing and come up with the ideas so i leave them pretty much to, to come up with all the good stuff well you're doing a great job bringing their words to life thank you. i'm a fanchi i know there's many fanchis out there thank you so much for your time <laughs>